Hi and welcome to the second video in our set of three looking at ways to get internet access in your van using 3 and 4G. In part one, which you can click here to see, we look at simple and cheap ways that will get you online and some tips and tricks for making them perform better. In this video, we'll look at more advanced and therefore a bit more expensive options if you want better performance and connectivity. And finally, in part three, we'll look at the currently available data SIM card deals for getting online. So let's get started. Don't miss any of our regular videos by hitting that subscribe button now. You can also check out our website at explorevan.uk for more details on our vans, trips and all the products we talk about. As you'll have seen in part one of the options we talked about, we managed quite well simply using a MiFi unit that we put outside the van if we needed a better signal. However, there were still areas where we travelled which sometimes struggled for a signal or the connection speed was slow. We were only able to connect up to 10 devices and as we didn't have it permanently mounted outside the van, it also wasn't great to use when on the move. So we wanted to look at a different alternative with more connections and an external antenna. To get the best out of an antenna, we wanted to be able to use a multiple input, multiple output or MIMO antenna, which would help to increase the data rate and reduce the bit error rate that a single antenna could cause. So we needed to make sure the MiFi unit we picked had two suitable connections. When looking for our new setup, we looked at a few options. The first were home routers with built-in 3G and 4G. This is possibly the cheapest way to get an off-the-shelf solution with external antenna connections without importing one from abroad. At just over £70, they also have the option to connect Ethernet devices having four ports each. They come with a mains power adapter plug but are 12 volt native, so with an extra lead, I'd suggest a stabilised 12 volt regulator, you could power it on 12 volts. The downside for us was that they are physically bigger than the portable routers and they don't have an internal battery and we wanted the flexibility of being able to use it away from the van if we wanted to. We also investigated the Teltonica RUT955 which we were close to going for but seemed a little overkill and a bit expensive for what we needed. It's an enterprise solution but if you're looking for the ultimate setup then it could be worth considering. Some of the things it adds are dual SIM failover, being able to choose the best performing network itself, up to 100 Wi-Fi connections, it's got four Ethernet connections, plus inputs and outputs to allow you to trigger notifications or control items. External antenna connections not only for 3G, 4G and Wi-Fi, but also if you want to add a GPS antenna, you can add location tracking functionality. But being a bit overkill for us and not having that internal battery we were looking for, we had to find an alternative. After having a good look around, we found the Netgear 790, which had good reviews and ticked the boxes with working standalone with internal antennas, but also coming with external antenna connections and also additional add-on antennas for when you are using it portably. We ended up importing a Big Pond branded 790 from Hong Kong as it was only £50 compared to the £140 for buying the same model off the shelf in the UK. The only configuration needed to make it work was to add the APN for the network of the SIM card that you use. The slight downside of using an imported model is around the support but also that when you're on your home network, so not roaming, the device doesn't show the usage stats as it's expecting to get these from the Big Pond account. As the MiFi can't connect to this, you'll always see this detecting service message. For us, this isn't a problem as we use an unlimited data plan, so don't need to keep track of our usage at home. When roaming, the usage meter does work. But if you wanted to know what you were using at home, you would have to do it through your network account app rather than the screen of the device. To partner the device, we went with this external MIMO antenna, which can be picked up for between 13 and 20 pounds. Admittedly, I was a little dubious of the ability of the aluminium bracket that came with it to cope with the wind resistance while traveling. So I have reinforced this with steel brackets. 
let's take a look at how the setup compares. So first, a simple test comparing the external antenna to the internal antenna on the MiFi. Here you can see the 4G signal drops from two bars to zero bars when the external antenna is disconnected. Here you can see the difference in upload and download speed between the simple Huawei MiFi inside, outside the van, and the Netgear inside and with the external antenna. The app that supports the Netgear MiFi lets you view and control all the settings. We have ours set up with a primary and a guest network, and you can also select which Wi-Fi band you want to use or have it as dual band. You can control your network settings, what shows on the screen a device, and you can see what devices are connected and even block them if you want to. For any of the options we've talked about to work well, you need to find the best data SIM deal. So in part three, we'll look at some of the plans from the various networks and which may suit you best. So hit that subscribe button so you don't miss them. Thanks for watching our video and as always, if you have any questions or feedback, please pop them in the comments below. If you find the video useful, please like, share and consider subscribing.